We've spoke, spoken a lot in, in some of the other sessions today around, and I think you mentioned this too, around authenticity. So clearly authenticity in the storytelling is a very important component. And then I think if, you, if you're looking to create uh, an emotional and memorable impression with that customer in a way that makes them proactive towards your brand when they come to make decisions about which vendors they're going to choose for the particular offering or solution you're, you're selling, um, what, what experience or, uh, or advice can you offer to organizations that are on that journey of trying to think, how do I deliver authenticity through my, through my storytelling and how do I make my stories memorable in a way that makes sure it's going to stick with in the eyes of customers when they come to make those sorts of decisions? So I think there's two elements of this. There is how you architect a narrative and a story to make it relevant, and there's the authentic piece. So let me take let me see if do the first bit first. So I think as a CMO, there are four key tenants that you should check on the way you tell the stories is one, is it relatable to my target audience? Can they be the protagonist in my story as I just said a minute ago? Do they have the same challenges as the hero in your story? What are they trying to overcome? So that's one thing, being relevant uh, to your target audience. And then secondly, it's going to be, is it novel? Is it new? Because that will make the sparks in your mind light up and be more attractive. We, we kind of embrace new things, new technologies, new stories, new visions. And if you can bring that novelty aspect into your story, there's a bet, better chance that you can connect breakthrough and attach to the audience. And then thirdly, fluidity. So is your message not complex? If it's written English, is it basic written English? The best storytellers like Dickens is very easy to read his great expectations. So, uh, or uh, is it shortcuts if it's video? If you've got Star Wars, that's what they, they use to keep you interested. So I think it's I've worked with this great storyteller at work um, who was a creative director in our consulting organization. And, you know, fascinating stories, but he used these long words. And I was like, I don't really understand what you're talking about. But if he said to me, look, uh, we're going to have a smelly lunch, I know what he means, right? That's a brown bag, lunch and learn. I understood that. But the complex word, I'm like, yeah, that sound, he sounds really cool. I wish I knew those words. My vocabulary is really limited. Um, and I think that's one of the things we need to be ca careful of is if it's, uh, you're in an industry or in the technology, you don't become a prisoner of that paradigm and you start talking about SEO, SEM if you're marketing and you're talking to your uh, sales leader. And he would be like, it's SEO and SEM, right? You know, what's MP MPUs? <laughs> you know, it, uh, so, so I think it's like having that easy narrative, you know, to consume uh, 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 piece. And then the final piece is really tension. Tension, right? <laughs> Ar Aristotle. Pause for effect. Ar pause for effect. <laughs> so Aristotle uh, says that great storytelling is about the what is and the what could be. And the gap in between is tension. And it's, you know, that as is and to be, how do you overcome those obstacles and how do you draw tension in? So you're close, the hero's close to overcome the obstacle. Or it's, if it's Hugh Grant, he suddenly does something and loses the girl and then he comes back as the saver at the end. So it's that tension piece that actually becomes a good story. And in, in our world, if it's tech, it's, you know, you could fail fast. Your company, when you're talking about digital disruption, the real risk of your organization going out of business in three, five years time or even 12 months is very real today. So it's like, what's that narrative you need to embed in that story? So that master piece. And yeah, I mean, I love that, right? <laughs> so right now I am in that tension, right? Because <laughs> the company I work for, uh, it is something and I see it where it can be. So in between, I'm spending most of my waking hours trying to tell the story to my internal audiences. And it's tougher than telling the story to the external audiences yeah. because they expect like the external audience, like customers and all, they expect that from brand like, you know, what we work for, to come up with new narratives, new stories, which are believable and with all the good sexy words. But internally, how do you change people, employees, shareholders, their mindset? How do you tell a story and convince them that 
hey, what you're doing is not broken, but times are changing and you need to stay relevant. You need to resonate with the new generation that's coming in. And I work in the manufacturing sector, which is a very traditional industry. And uh, things have been done in a certain way. And it's being done for the past hundreds of years. Nothing's changed, except the customers changed. The demands have changed. Their needs have changed. And you know, you, the way you market to them, the way you sell to them has changed. How do you convince through storytelling that you need to change as well, right? Bring a new blood into the company, new ideas into the company. You're not just like, you know, doing something for the sake of it, but you're future proofing your own company because you are, you know, get, getting ahead of time. It's really, really tough and challenging. And I've done, I actually, before this, I counted the number of hours I've spent just talking to people to create that story. It's 85 hours with each department. So multiplied by 19 departments. It's, it's incredibly long, but I have notes and notes and I'm not, I don't take notes, but I have so many notes because everyone has a different story, different take on the story, whether it's employee. And we have a lot of like, you know, people from every level, right? Every, but what I was trying to find was one thing that is common, yeah. the commonality between everyone. And luckily, like after endless hours, I have been able to find it. And now, like, you know, I plan to build on that so that when the story comes out, everyone can resonate with it internally. And that's been like proven like a huge, huge, huge challenge. Hopefully, you know, a lot of times, a lot of companies don't have to do that. But for a company like I, where I work, it was critical. Right. So before going outside, I had to do all of that internally. And that's taken me quite. But it's beautiful because now that commonality that I found is something that people will resonate with and will tell that confidently, whether it's employees who live a day in and day out, whether it's shareholders who have a stake in it. So it's, it's good. And I'm hoping like, you know, when it comes out, the customers also resonate with it because the, I've also spoken to lots and lots of customers and made sure that there is a connection. So yeah, it's, it's huge. <laughs> and and there's a, there's a, I was gonna say, there's, there's a great book. So I spent uh, a lot of time with Matthew Saeed recently who wrote Black Box Thinking. It's about growth mindsets and fixed mindsets. And also a new book called uh, Rebel Ideas. And he, kind of talks about this fixed mindset and this growth mindset that you should not be a prisoner in your own paradigm. And you're saying that some people, they're just stuck in their ways. The old, this is the way we did things around here versus if you're in that fixed mindset, you know what, in this age of disruption, you're going to lose. Yeah. A new startup will enter your industry. They will take your market share. There's this new phrase, which I keep hearing called disrupted capitalism. As an incumbent, the only way a startup can survive is by taking your share of customers. They're going to increase the, they offer better customer service. They're going to go after the gold of your customer base. You just need to look at the financial services industry today. You know, Barclays, HSBC, they're scared of Monzo. Monzo mm -hmm. did advertising campaign, an advertising campaign, put a bit of fuel behind that. They're subscribing, what, 250,000 customers a month. Where are they coming from? The incumbents. The only way they can survive, but they've got a great story, a great customer service story, how they drive in change across an, an industry which has done things the way they traditionally have done. And, and in that, um, that, that kind of shift you're seeing is, in the banking sector, am I a bank today or am I a software company? And you can probably see that in any organization. Am I actually from a traditional business or am I a software company? Mm -hmm. And if you're stuck in that fixed mindset of I'm just going to outbank you, I'm going to be the best banker. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. <laughs> the best banker that you can ever be. But if you've got a different mindset, say I'm a software company and it's about delivering better products and services to my customers and here's the story and narrative of how I do that, that's <clears throat> a different way of approaching your business. Just before we come on to you, you touched on a great point there, which we'll come on to in a second. Just wanted to respond to your point. This idea, I think, of um, 
when you think about storytelling and who is your audience, storytelling to what most people would think of as their audience being the customer is one thing. But in order for that story to consistently get through to customers, you've got to make sure that that story resonates with your internal stakeholders as well, especially your sales team, because ultimately they're going to be the people who will tell that story to your customers when they're face to face. So in crafting your story and thinking about how you engage and enable the rest of your stakeholder teams to deliver that, that, that experience to customers, come back to your own experience in a minute, I think internal stakeholders are hugely important to make sure that they're aligned.